How do you recommend for people to find the time to create rhythms? I know you say you block out the Sunday to be with yourself and spend time walking in nature, trying not to be distracted. Where do I find the time to unpack it? How do I make time for that? And where do I start? Well, you start with understanding that your cup being full is how you allow yourself to give to other people. You mm. you can't give what you don't have. You can't love if you haven't been loved. You don't even know how to begin to do that. So I think it begins with fundamentally understanding that you are worthy enough, you are valuable enough, you matter enough to give yourself the love that you deserve. And that starts by taking out time for yourself. So I have my own rhythm and pattern. I know that if, if I go six days and then on the seventh, by the seventh or eighth, don't give myself a break, that lots of other things give, mm -hmm. that I'm not as alert, I'm not as attuned, I'm not as centered, I'm not as focused. So I know that that is, that is my limit. I cannot go beyond a certain amount of days. And for me, walking in nature is my solace. It is where I feel that I am one with all and all being, you know, all creation and, you know, connected. For other people, it may be dancing, it may be music, it may be knitting, it may be whatever it is that brings some kind of rhythmic pattern into your life. Actually, it was Bruce and I were walking on my campus in South Africa and uh, there were a group of girls dancing, literally on the lawn, because Lord knows they love to dance. And Bruce says, oh, that's not just, I said, oh, they're just having fun. And Bruce said, oh, they're not just having fun. They actually are healing themselves mm -hmm. because the rhythmic pattern, that's why when you've been in an argument with someone or you're in the middle of an argument with somebody, if you just go and take a walk, or you go and turn on some music and you start dancing. If you just have some form of movement, you feel better. That's number one. Number two, one of the most important things, most, most important takeaways from what happened to you, I believe, is understanding how the brain works. So you see that beginning with the brain stem, that's the lower part of the brain, all the way to the cortex and through the limbic area, you understand that when you're upset or in fear or angry or are in, in an antagonized state and you're trying to reason with a person, a child, your spouse, your boss, your friend, they literally cannot hear you because the reasoning part of the brain is in the cortex and what you're saying is only reaching the brain stem. So whenever somebody is dysregulated, which is what that is, being ang anxious and fearful and yelling and screaming, the thing to do is to calm yourself first, then you will be able to help that other person get calm and regulated. That's how you get to reason. But if you both are just yelling at each other, literally, and you're going, you don't hear me and you don't hear me either, and you don't hear, they actually cannot hear you. That's what I thought was so fascinating. If I leave you with nothing else, it's, just know this for sure. There is not one thing that has ever happened to you. Not one experience, not one encounter, not one crisis, not one joyful thing that hasn't happened just to make you better and help you rise. Every single thing you're calling in, whether you know it or not, when you figure out that you are calling it in, you actually start meditating or praying or doing or having a spiritual practice, which is the number one thing you need if you want to be successful in the world. You need something that gives back and nourishes you, regardless of what you call that. You need to, you need to fill your cup so that you can be so full, your cup runneth over and you have enough to give to other people. If you don't fill your cup, you end up dried up. You end up tired, exhausted, and don't have enough to give to other people. You end up resentful every time somebody asks you because your cup is empty and now they want some of yours. So your number one job, your number one job is to fill your cup and make yourself whole. That's your job. The best way to begin to figure out who you are really meant to be is to ask 
the universe, God, that question. God, how can I be used in service to myself first? And how can I then use that service to serve the world? Use your life to serve the world and you will find that it also serves you. One of the biggest mistakes people make is thinking that they have to get paid a lot of money or even get paid at all for their calling. You are here to honor your calling, whether you're paid for it or not. If you can get paid for it, that makes life exponentially better. But if you are not paid for it, that is also really just fine because honoring the calling feeds everything else you do in your life. I have always known this about celebrity. The real power of being somebody that somebody knows, and I really think that the only difference between being famous and not is that more people know your name. So the only difference between understanding that is understanding that what Selma has done, what Susan has done, what Anna has done, Rebecca has done, what Jim has done, what I've done, you too can do. Because true philanthropy comes from living from the heart of yourself and giving what you have been given. How will you do that? How will you use your personality, the energy of your personality to serve that which is your soul's calling. I know this for sure. Any life, no matter how fantastic it is, how glorious it seems, how much attention you receive, how much square footage you have, any life and every life is enhanced by the sharing and the giving and the opening up of the heart space. Your life gets better when you can find a way to share it with someone else. So what we've done, you can do. The real empowerment comes when every person leaves this room and makes a decision, makes a decision. Maybe that decision is that you will write a check and support some of the wonderful organizations you've heard here today. But the true decision is, how will you use yourself? How will you use everything that you have been given to serve that which is greater than yourself? How will you use that to become truly, authentically empowered? Now, it is a beautiful thing to receive an award and to be on the cover of Variety. Thank you very much. It's a beautiful thing. But the true reward is in the lives that you are able to touch and the people who you know you have impacted. I think that people who found their purpose are better partners, better parents, better professionals, better people. And so if everyone in the world was deeply aligned and connected to their purpose, the world would be a beautiful place. And I think any pain we see in the world comes from a disconnect with purpose. There's a beautiful thought from Russell Barkley where he said that the people who need the most love often ask for it in the most unloving ways. So we confuse love with power. We confuse love with control. We confuse love with validation and being liked. And to me, love comes from living our purpose, self-love and true love with other people. We all have what's called the monk mind and the monkey mind. And as monks, we were trained to look at the parts of our minds that we make mistakes that fail, that do things wrong is the monkey mind. And immediately when you think of your mind like a monkey, you just end up laughing. You're just like, that's just the silliest thing. And so now when you start seeing yourself do things that are out of character or out of alignment or things that you don't feel proud of, instead of judging yourself and criticizing yourself, you're approaching it going, well, that's just the monkey mind. Let me understand that is separate of me. That is not me. That is a habit that I've taken on. That is a group of people that I've spent too much time with. It's an idea that I've absorbed. If you can look at these things as separate to who you are, you can now actually tackle them versus when you think you are them, it just leads to guilt, judgment, self-criticism and self-sabotage, which I'm sure a lot of us are privy to, yeah. that we go through this period where we're like, I can't believe I did that, I shouldn't have said that, I wish, I just wish I didn't say that in that moment. 
And that doesn't change your behavior. It doesn't switch how you feel. It just creates more regret. Yeah. But when you go, wait a minute, that's just the monkey mind. I've got that condition. I've associated with that type of environment and energy. Let me approach it as something that is separate of me. Mm -hmm. Creating that distance and space from our challenges lets us actually start solving them.